Go ahead and just go ahead and take a moment and let's just worship the Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the place you have in this university and in the lives of these students. Father, we dishonor you tonight. We praise you tonight. Amen. 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 Express your appreciation to one voice this evening. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And if you would like uh, them to come to your church and be a part of uh, a Sunday morning or an evening. Uh, you need to get a hold of Julie Ely or my office and we will see what we can arrange for that. I know they'll be a blessing. They are a true blessing uh, wherever they've traveled. <clears throat> One of the most popular things that we do at Vision for Education is uh, when we give some of our students an opportunity to share with you a little about who they are, the road that got them to Southwestern, and maybe what God is doing in their life both before they got here and while they've been here. We have six students that are going to come this evening and prepare to give you a, a little bit of a testimony about themselves. They'll introduce themselves and uh, tell you where they're from and what they're majoring in. So would you welcome those students tonight? And uh, I know we're in for some, a real treat as they give you their testimony. Good evening. Hello? Is this on? It is. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Brasco Fonikak. Um, when Coach Arthur and uh, Dr. Murray asked me to give my testimony tonight at the Vision for Education dinner, um, I thought they were, this would be impossible because I had so much in my heart to talk about. I was born and raised in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, knowing of Christ but not a Christian, um, it was kind of difficult for me to make the decision to accept a scholarship to come to a Christian school as I had no clue what, what was, was going to happen and what was in store for me. Um, but little did I know what God had planned for me with the uh, years to come being at Southwestern. Uh, when getting to SCU, I was shocked with how welcoming, how loving, and how caring everybody was. Uh, after watching movies about Americans, that definitely wasn't the thought in mind that I had. Um, but obviously, definitely an eye-opener. Southern hospitality is really something. Um, my first few weeks at SCU was a little difficult. Um, I was very discouraged to go to chapels and get all the credits that were necessary for us. Um, I thought that this was a waste of time. Um, but this, this changed quickly, um, all thanks to John Mark, my RA at the time when I first got here. Uh, he was very willing to help me. He cared. He always asked how I was um, and, and taught me about God and, and, and the Bible without forcing me. Um, He was always there to answer questions I might have had. Um, he, he was just—he just always had had an answer for everything. I mean, no matter how hard the question was, no matter how tough it was to answer, he—he he just always had had an answer for me. 
Um, in December of 2019, uh, it's when I decided that the Lord Jesus Christ was my Savior and I wanted to give my life to Him. I told John Mark that this was my decision, um, and he sat down with me and told me what this, this was all about, what it entailed of me. Um, after a long conversation with him, he, he then prayed over me, which is an experience I'll never forget. Um, and I soon got baptized after that on the 1st of March, 2020. Um, I accepted God into my life. This was the best decision I've ever made. Um, and this, this wouldn't have been possible without the help of um, SEU staff and, and everybody around me here for sure. I just want to thank Dr. Murray, uh, the faculty and staff at SCU, because I definitely still would be on the same path I was on in South Africa. Um, so yeah, just thank you to everybody who has helped me and, and led me in the right direction. Um, I'd also like to thank the alumni here tonight. Thank you for all the generosity you guys have. You, I am definitely a life that has been changed through all your giving. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm the queen. Just kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm Tammy, and I'm from Brazil, and uh, that's my fifth year in America. That's my third year here at SU. And I was playing in New Mexico Junior College, and I had... I was doing good at basketball, but not in the classroom room. Had a lot of D1 offers and a lot of schools looking for me, but I couldn't meet it because of my GPA. I went home for summer, was frustrated, took some summer classes, and still didn't meet it. <laughs> and then I was, I was super frustrated because I wanna play basketball. And then I wanted to come to Oklahoma, by the way, because OSU was recruiting me. I was like, all right, I want to go to Oklahoma. And then I had a coach that helped me um, look for any school in Oklahoma. And a lot of coaches didn't, when they look at my transcript, they were like, oh, girl, no. <laughs> but one coach, I don't know, Mark, he, he gave me a chance. Also, my uncle too, Coach Blackwell, because when they watch me, my video, my uncle's like, yeah, Mark, you gotta get her. <laughs> and since I got here, I mean, when I first got here, I didn't really like it because, I don't know, it was just different. It wasn't something that I was expecting. I was expecting to be um, in a high level and stuff like that. But since I got here, um, I realized that God, like he has a reason for me, for me to be here. And now I, I do not regret having a bad GPA, honestly. Because <laughs> I wouldn't be here today. And God has changed my life a lot since I got here. And I understand that I was supposed to be here to get close to him. And it's not just basketball. And since I got here, I see life different, everything different. I know I got to be super close to God and all that stuff. And I'm thankful for all the staff factor, everybody around here that knows me and helps me a lot. And thank you, Coach Arthur, for giving me a chance to be here. Never thought I would be speaking a lot of, in front of a lot of people. <laughs> but, but thank you. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Allie Wayne. Um, I just wanna take a moment, Dr. Murray, I, I just appreciate um, the opportunity to, to even be at the school. I thank you for that and I thank you uh, just for this weekend, you've done so much, so I really appreciate it. And for all of you guys being here, thank you. Thank you for coming to support the school and, and to support us. And um, I know we all look up to you guys in so many ways just for being alumni and uh, yeah, we just, we appreciate you guys. Thank you for all that you've done. Uh, just a little bit about me. I am from, I'm short, so I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> um, I am from Salem, Virginia, which is, you know, kind of far, uh, but not as far as Brazil. <laughs> Where'd she go? <laughs> um, 
I, some of you guys may know some of my family. My mom is Melanie Wayne. She works close with Miss Julie Ely. And uh, my grandpa is Tony Atkinson. So I've grown up in the IPHC. Um, both my parents were pastors at one point in my life. So I've pretty much been in church my whole life and uh, stayed in Salem, Virginia my entire life. So this is kind of my first time being away from home for an extended period of time. However, I was an intern uh, with The Awakening this summer, which was awesome. Go The Awakening, woo! <laughs> um, and it was just an amazing ex experience. We, we were gone for about two months. Two months, thank you, Max. <laughs> two months, and uh, just went three different countries around the world and sh shared the good news of Jesus, what it means to be a Christian, and, and truly learning the service of, of being a Christian, and I think that's it's really important. Jesus calls us to serve. And so I was in Hungary and I, in Budapest, and I was just uh, walking down the street in Budapest casually, and uh, I was praying about where to go to college because I was planning on just staying home in Virginia. And I was like, God, if I'm supposed to go somewhere else, like, I want, I want to hear it clearly. I, I want to hear your voice clearly um, because I want to go where you want me to go, right? Um, and so I, I distinctly remember I was walking and I saw this picture and it was of a plane. It was like a map of the United States. And there was a plane flying from Virginia over to Oklahoma City. And I was like, wow, that's really cool, God. You're super awesome. <laughs> then I heard this voice from behind me and um, it almost stopped me dead in my tracks. And it, it said, die to yourself. And at first I was like, what? <laughs> That's so morbid and dark sounding. But the more I prayed about it and the more I thought about it, the more I realized, like, that, that was the Lord. Like, die to your comfort, you know? Like, being a, a Christian isn't supposed to be comfortable. Um, and, so, and so I just remember being like, okay, okay, I guess I'm going to SCU. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so I'm in Hungary, and my parents are in the United States, and I called them, and I'm like, so mom, um, I'm gonna move to Oklahoma. And my mom's like, what? Anyways, long, long story short, the Lord provided, and, and I'm here, and uh, I'm just really happy to be here. And so, um, yeah, I'm currently involved in SGA. I'm interning with The Awakening as an, a traditional intern, and uh, yeah, loving it here. It's amazing. Go see you, woo! <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Rebecca Lester. Um, I am from South Georgia, long ways from home, but you know, not out of the country. <laughs> um, I've been doing missions with my mom since I was about 10 years old. I went to, to South America, Asia, um, and then actually I got to go to Africa um, with the Awakening. And while I was in Africa, God spoke to me. It wasn't um, this <laughs> big voice like, hey, you're supposed to live here, but it was more just about um, peace and being there, and I wasn't really sure. Um, I just know that I was supposed to go, not really sure how I was actually supposed to get there. And then um, summer of 2019, I did an internship with Awakening, and we went to the Heartland Conference. Um, and I remember just being on my knees praying, like I, I really love Oklahoma, but there's absolutely no way for me to go to school here. It's just not possible. Well, <laughs> it's possible if God wants it to happen. It's gonna happen. Um, and I remember being offered um, a scholarship to go here and just thinking how crazy it would be. Um, and then I got back home and um, I, I remember just being discouraged and allowing my discouragement to kind of um, take over and, and realizing that I, I just couldn't do it. And then and there was a lot of like logistics and stuff like that. Um, and I just took a year off from school. And then I remember, remember God speaking to me and telling me, you're supposed to be there. You're not supposed to be here. Well, God, I've turned down the scholarship and I did this and that. And it's a year later now. How am I supposed to get there? Well, you're supposed to be in Africa. Well, how am I supposed to get there if I can't get to Oklahoma? And um, I remember actually um, Max reaching out to me and saying, if you still want to come, you can come. God spoke to him right after I remember being face down crying that I wanted to come here. And then coming to, to SCU um, allows me <laughs> to get to where um, I'm supposed to be my calling, which is Africa. And, and I just remember 
being so thankful. It's a long ways from home, but it's worth it. Um, surrendering to God and his will isn't easy all the time, but it's 100% worth it, and I wouldn't change anything about it. Um, and he's spoken to me so, so much since I've been here, and he's allowed many, many opportunities just being here and then with the awakening and then SGA and stuff like that, and um, he's just definitely given me peace about being here, being so far from my family, so I definitely know this is what his will is for my life currently. Um, so I just wanted to thank all of you guys for all that you do and thank the president for all he does for the school and, and it's just amazing being here in this opportunity. So thank you. How's everyone doing? Um, I'm Tyler Deshant. I'm a junior here at Southwestern Christian and uh, I'm from Oklahoma, Boomer Sooner, by the way. And yes, yes. And um, yeah, so I went to Yukon High School, graduated in 2019. Um, didn't know what God was calling me to do. I started pursuing a relationship with him uh, my junior year. And through that, he's led me to a place of being to SCU. And um, I came kind of good at track and field. And I got a scholarship through that here. And Coach Parent is actually the head track and field coach at Yukon High School. And he's also the head track and field coach here at SCU. Coincidence, thank you, God. And, um, <laughs> and through that, um, I came here and switched my major three times. It was a rough one, but God provided. So I'm going into biblical studies, and through that, um, God has led me to a place of just doing his will. I mean, I just want to spread the gospel. That's all I care about doing. And um, through the process of that, um, I was asked, you know, to do this, and I was honored. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Murray and everyone here. And um, one thing that came to me was the professors and love. And because of that is through the journey of changing my major three times, I was able to actually talk to a bunch of professors here. Um, like in psychology, that was one of my, that was my second major I was going into. It was Dr. Wesley Lee. He took me out for lunch. And um, going into ministry, uh, Christian Ramsey, Ken Young, Professor Fox, you know, um, Jesse Heath. <laughs> and um, through that, they show an undeniable love of Jesus. I mean, because I've heard Ken Young plenty of times saying, I'll drive, I'll drive from home or I'll stay late for you to help you with your work and stuff. And through that, um, I've been able to sit down with him and they help me in the struggles of, you know, that I go through and we're able to build a faith through that, you know. And not only that, but I've had friends and peers that have helped me um, grow in the faith. You know, iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. And I think that's important. So, yeah, and I just, I thank God for the faculty and, faculty and, faculty and staff, sorry. I was rehearsing that today and kept messing up. <laughs> and um, through that, uh, you know, because when you're choosing someone to be a professor, you know, they're having an influence on the students. And um, each teacher I've, or professor I've met so far is wonderful um, in the faith and showing that love of Jesus. And um, yeah, so I praise God and thank you all for being here and thank you for your time. God bless you. Hello, everyone. My name is Luke Cecil. Um, I am a junior here at Southwestern. I'm in the Christian Leadership Department. Um, just a little bit about how I got to Southwestern. Um, I'm going to start when 2019 I was at um, YouthQuest, our IPHC event, and I was actually had the privilege to be an intern that year. And um, I was walking past all of the booths, the Southwestern booth, Emmanuel College, Holmes Bible College. And every time I walked past the Southwestern booth, there was a man named Brad Davis and every time I walked by, he would yell at me and say, hey, I need you to come talk to me. And I just would just keep on walking. And I was like, first of all, who is this crazy man screaming at me? And how does he know my name? Um, and the last time that I walked by, I remember God was just like, you just need to walk over there. And I didn't have an excuse not to. I didn't have, an, I didn't have a task at hand, so I couldn't say I'm busy. So <laughs> I walked over and I lent him my ear for a second. And he just, he didn't try to push the school. He just had a conversation with me. He was just trying to connect with me. And I ended up leaving him with my information and didn't really think anything of it until a few weeks later, um, he sent me a Facebook message and he was like, hey, um, have you thought any more about Southwestern? And 
I really hadn't, but I was like, yeah, yeah, I have a little bit. And he started sending me some more information. And I remember I got a student recruiter, Kaylee Grisham, is she in the building? Whoop, whoop, back there. She was my student recruiter and she called me. She's very persistent, but she does what she's supposed to. And she gave me all the information that I needed and she called me each week. And Brad asked me, he said, what do I have to do to get you here? And I said, well, first of all, you're going to have to talk to my mom because it is 16 and a half hours away from my home. And I don't think she's going to go for that. And he actually did. When he came to North Carolina, he met with my parents and he um, explained everything to them and laid out the scholarship opportunities and was just really gracious. Him and Whitney Davis both were so gracious to my family and we, we love them so much. Um, but without my parents and without God, I would not be here. And he provided a way for me. And I, what I do when I, when I go out and I'm recruiting students like with One Voice and things like that, and I'm just giving a little plug for the university, I say, if finances are the reason that you can't go to the, to the university that you wanna go to, don't worry about it because God's gonna provide. God's gonna take care of it. So, um, yep, I've been at Southwestern since um, January of 2020. Um, I've had the privilege of serving in chapel band. I'm a campus chaplain right now on SGA. And um, my prayer is that I can serve this university just as much as it served and blessed me. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Dr. Murray, for allowing me to speak. God bless you. I am so proud of our students. So very proud of our students. We, uh, I, every fall when the new students come in, we have a uh, convocation, and I talk about the road that brought you here. And uh, as I talk with our students and find out about what God was doing, in many cases, years before they ever showed up here, is just remarkable what God is doing to get students here. And I accept them as a gift from God. Our faculty and staff accept them as a gift from God. We believe that God has them here for a reason, and we are so, so proud of them. So thank you, students, for uh, sharing this evening uh, with our friends and our alumni. It's my honor this evening to introduce to you the Executive Director of Women's Ministry for the International Pentecostal Holiness Church, and uh, her and uh, Luke talked about uh, Brad Davis, and Brad was on staff here, and uh, uh, they have uh, accepted a church in North Carolina, and uh, so we don't get to see them very often, but Whitney, it's great to have you here. Thank you for coming. Come and share about Vision for Education. This is Whitney Davis. Thank you, President Murray. I'm gonna ask Christy Barlow to join me up here as well. Um, it's so great being here, a little bit bittersweet. Um, we've gotten to devote the last eight years of our lives to Oklahoma, to SCU, to lots of hearts and lives that are in this room tonight. So I'm honored to be here and I'm excited to celebrate um, Southwestern tonight. Christy Barlow is our um, Women's Director for the New Horizons Conference. And we have several New Horizons students here tonight. Um, also in attendance, we have Terry and Kendra Louder. You guys wave if you're back there. Um, they are representing the Heartland Conference tonight. And um, for decades from probably close to the beginning of its inception, Women's Ministries um, has been involved in supporting our institutions. You heard earlier, President Murray said through what was called Feast of Ingathering, who later, it was later named Vision for Education. Um, currently, Women's Ministries is under the umbrella of Discipleship Ministries. And as part of Discipleship Ministries, we exist to help advance Christ's mission in the local church. We partner with the conference and local church leaders to inspire equip and support them on their journey of becoming more like Jesus. And that's pretty much what this school exists to do as well. Um, so we're honored to just partner with you and support in that mission. Um, so I'm representing Women's Ministries as a whole, but I'm going to allow Christy Barlow just to speak for just a minute, her heart and her love for Southwestern, and she's going to announce um, the grand total giving um, on behalf of Women's Ministries to the Vision for Education offering this year. Well, thank you, Whitney Davis, our fearless leader. We love her so much. She's wonderful. Uh, I am an SCU alumni. I graduated 
way back in 2002. And uh, my husband, Neil, graduated in 2001. We are indebted to the university. Uh, and uh, God has just been so faithful through all these years to be a blessing to our family. And we're so grateful to be a part of the SCU family. So the um, grand total for women's ministries uh, from the Heartland Conference and from New Horizons Ministries and a few others is $25,000. And <laughs> and I, I know that whenever I was a student here at Southwestern, it looked a lot different than it does this gathering of the ladies. But I remember being the recipient of a basket full of goodies when the ladies from my church and the women's ministries would come and they would, they would just pour their, their love into us. And we may not get to see them on a daily basis or even hear their voices very often, but that one time a year that they came and that they made a sacrifice to let us know how much they love us meant the world to me. And I hope that our students know how much we love them and we pray for them, so... We love you, Southwestern. <laughs> Thank you, Whitney, for, for coming and, and being a part of this celebration. 75 years is a long time, and uh, this is the first, this fall, these fall events are the first. In the spring, we will be doing a, a major celebration also, uh, probably more formal and gala type uh, event, and uh, we definitely will be getting information to you so you can mark your calendar and be a, a part of that. But we wanted to start this year with the Feast of Ingathering and Homecoming Weekend as our first event, and then we will conclude at graduation uh, in uh, the 1st of May. It's always an honor to have um, Board of Trustee members on our campus. We have a great Board of Trustees and uh, love them dearly. Uh, men and women that are committed to this university, many of them are alumni of this university. And so it's always wonderful to have them on campus and it's always wonderful to have the Chairman of the Board of Trustees on campus. He's gonna come and greet you this evening. Would you welcome Bishop Randall Drake, Chairman of the Board of Trustees. Well, it is always wonderful to be able to come together at Southwestern, amen? And so that we are able to come together and to rejoice in what God has truly done. One voice and all of our students, we are so proud of you. It was wonderful to be down in the ball games and just see the excitement and to see how everything went. And we're so very thankful for each of you. Faculty and staff, we appreciate you. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, we thank you for all that you do. Uh, I came to Southwestern in 1976, graduated in 1980, and then was part of the, as Garnet Pike called it, first class, first class of the graduate school to be able to uh, graduate and be a part of that. Our sons, uh, both of our sons, uh, attended Southwestern here, uh, and Taylor, our oldest, uh, ended up being in One Voice and then was the director of One Voice. And so very thankful for each of you, and my wife Michelle was a student here, but also on faculty for a while. So we've had a lot of time with Southwestern, and as a board of trustee member, I've been able to be a part of this university when it was Southwestern College, and then with Bob Ely, uh, we just appreciate it so much. I actually became a board member back with Ron Moore. Uh, in, uh, so in 97, if I'm not mistaken, if I've got that right. So I've been on the board for a long time. It is an honor to be the chairman of the Board of Trustees. I'd like to ask if you have been on the Board of Trustees or the Board of Regents or a former president here, would you please stand? We appreciate you. Amen. These are men and women who have given their hearts, if you would, and their lives, finances to be able to share. And we want to say as Board of Trustees alumni, it is so important to have you back on this campus to be able to see all that's going on because the truth of the matter is as important as faculty and staff 
an administration, board of trustees, the reason for Southwestern Christian University are the students. It is their lives. Hearing those testimonies helps us to realize that each of you has a journey that God brought you here. And for every one of us, we have a story, amen? Every one of you has a story of how you got to Southwestern, whether it was 10th Street or here on 39th. And we are very, very thankful as a board of trustees that you have also entrusted to us the opportunity of guiding and leading and working with who I, one of the person that I greatly consider uh, just one of my best friends and a person that we dearly love, and that is our president. And we are very thankful for him and all that he is doing. We believe in the leadership of Dr. Tom Murray, and he's going to come at this time and address you. Would you welcome our president, Tom Murray? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, let me recognize the, uh, the people that keep me motivated. Uh, my dear wife, Teresa, and my two daughters, Caitlin and Olivia. And I don't get to have them with me very much, but it's an honor to have them with me tonight. So, <laughs> For a long time, I was the only male in a house of quite a few females, including a dog and fish and birds and, and all. But a few years ago, we acquired... Uh, Flash. Flash is our 95, 90 pound tortoise. Big, big boy. Big tortoise. And so I have a little bit of leverage now. Although he sleeps, he's been asleep for about a week now that it's cold and he'll sleep for a while. And uh, he just sleeps. Gets up around 11, eats, goes back to sleep. And uh, so... Some of you will have said, you want to come visit him and come see him, and we'll, we'll try to make that possible. I may bring him. No, I probably won't. <laughs> he doesn't go around anything. He just moves it, you know. So, If you will indulge me this evening for just a few minutes, I would appreciate it. Uh, God is a God of miracles. That is uh, something that I stand on and believe. I've seen miracles over the past three years, almost on a daily basis, sometimes several times a day. When it appeared sometimes that the camp was surrounded by the enemy, uh, more than once God moves in just at the right time and the favor of God is revealed. It's happened in your life. Many, many times it's happened in my life personally, but it happens in the life of this school. If I had time tonight, I could tell you a lot of stories about the challenges and maybe dealing with the federal government who wanted well over a million dollars returned to them when I arrived. I could tell you about another million dollar contract that appeared uh, could only be settled in court. Uh, that had been in place for several years before I arrived and one day was settled at merely dimes on the dollar. On a day, to be honest with you, wasn't a day that I could really muster much faith. Uh, you've had those days. I was literally wore out from dealing with the man. But you see, while he was wearing me out, God was wearing him out. And I didn't know that. And uh, when I was a boy growing up here in Oklahoma, if we get in a res wrestling match in, in the backyard or in the den of the house or wherever, uh, if we needed to give up, uh, we would holler calf rope. Uh, I didn't really know at the time what that meant. I just knew I was giving up. And on that day, totally unexpected, I just knew that I wasn't going to keep being on the other side of that wrestling match. And that day, he hollered calf rope. And uh, that was a million dollar contract. We settled it with merely dimes on the dollar, really. If I had time, I could tell you about how God intervened during COVID 
on this campus. Let me tell you, God is a God of miracles. You know that. A few weeks ago, I had a true visitation from God. He basically said, you need to move from a place of just making it, just keeping the doors open, just making it, to a place of widening the doors and then watch me provide new doors. That was, his, that was a revelation. That was his, I, I heard from God that day. What does that mean? It means that Southwestern, since 1946, has scraped and borrowed and pinched pennies every day of every year for 75 years. We've never had the large endowments. We've never had those large gifts or reserves to do everything on, on the list that need to be done. We've never had that. But God reminded me of the many times that he has been faithful, that my faith has been stretched. But on that day, his instructions, after reminding me of all the times that faith has what got me through those difficulties. He said, Tom, you know my word. You know the lessons of faith that I have taught you over and over. You know the sermons that you have preached yourself about faith. You've quoted it. You've quoted even in your fundraising over the past 40 years that, that you know all of that, but you haven't learned how to dream. He said, oh, I know you think you've learned how to dream, but let me show you how to dream for Southwestern. I want to teach you about those dreams that you've said over the years that if, and I have, I've taught this, that if your dreams for the ministry and for God don't keep you awake at night, they're not big enough. If you've been around me, you've heard me say that. I said, but God, I have laid awake. He said, you've laid awake worrying. You've laid awake worrying. Worrying is doubting. Worrying is doubting. It's not dreaming. He said, I want you to dream. And that's what I would say to you tonight. I want you to dream. Dream about your own family, your own business, your own church, your own ministry. But dream for these students about what God can do. He's doing it, but what we could even do greater as we look at being a global university. Three years ago, the college was facing some what appeared to be insurmountable challenges. The college had received a gift that had really turned into a nightmare, and that was a building on 23rd Street. We had accepted that uh, before I arrived. It was, it was a money pit. It was draining the resources of the institution. Uh, they had borrowed against that building. And uh, so you had that note, you had that debt and interest on that debt. And, and Robert Palmer's here tonight, uh, our chief of maintenance, and he knows the hours that he was putting into that building. It leaked, it, every window leaked, the roof leaked. It was a nightmare. And we needed to get rid of it. God spoke to me one morning as I was driving in, and he said, and I was praying about that building, and uh, he said, the college needs to plant a seed. The college needs to plant a seed. Well, it's very unusual for ministries or college to take money that they really don't have and plant a seed into another, another ministry. I'm the one that needs someone to plant a seed for me, for this school. But he was very clear about that, and I you know, negotiated with God and didn't, it's kind of like, well, God, let, I tell you what, let me plant that seed. You, I'll plant the seed personally, and then you bless the college. He said, no, doesn't work that way. And that was tough. That was a hard decision. I want the college to plant a seed. I said, I don't know if that's ever been done. He said, do it. Bishop Beecham, I think you will probably remember. 
I came over, I think I called you or you were having an ECOB meeting and I came over. And I took a check over, four $1,000 checks to every major division for the IPHC. General administration, uh, missions, evangelism, discipleship. And we that day planted a seed into the ministry, to the mother ministry of this institution. Don't know that that's ever been done. Don't, I don't know. But we did it that day. Within a month, I had a contract on that building on 23rd Street for over $600,000 that would pay off the debt Take care of that. We wouldn't be putting money into interest. And Robert, we wouldn't be trying to go over there every day and fix something. God answered that prayer and honored that seed. He honored that seed. I say all this because when I arrived a few years ago, college was nearly 17, three quarters million in debt. And uh, today we've reduced that to about 11 and a half million from 17, 6,000, 6 million. One of those sizable reductions came out of the generosity of the International Pentecostal Holiness Church, Bishop Beecham and the Council of Bishops. And they just recently within just the past few months, uh, the college had a million dollar debt that they had borrowed back several years ago before I arrived. And the International Pentecostal Holiness Church under the leadership of Bishop Beecham forgave that million dollars. And Bishop Beecham, thank you for your leadership, for your vision for education. Your vision for education, the vision of the general officials for education. Thank you. Thank you for that. We're going to be kicking off in just a few weeks the capital campaign that will take us through a couple of years here. Uh, we have a goal. Uh, I believe we have a goal unless God changes it. And uh, we are hoping to raise three and a half million dollars over the next couple of years. Three and a half million dollars. I personally, since it's the 75th anniversary, I personally would like that to be seven million five hundred thousand dollars. Go. Fulfilling a legacy of excellence. Investing in destiny-driven leaders. That some of those you heard tonight. And so I want you to begin to think. The women have given tonight and uh, the women's ministry, and we thank them for that. But we want to give you the opportunity to give. Somebody looked over here a while ago and asked, what, asked me what this was. I, I called the house, and I told Teresa this afternoon, I said, bring, don't we have a wicker laundry basket? And she said, oh, yeah. Well, Caitlin said that. So I had them bring this wicker laundry basket. Here's, here's the deal on this laundry basket. It was mentioned last night. Does anybody remember Jesse Winley? Does everybody remember? Uh, we used to do basketball trips. Jerry Boone is here, and Glenda, Jerry was basketball coach, athletic director. We did trips to New York City, recruited heavily out of there. and We did trips up, and we would always go to Jesse Winley's church, Soul Saving Station for All Nations in, in, in Harlem. And later, after years, after leaving Southwestern, I had the opportunity to be back in New York City and, and, and was there in the church. And one of the deacons took me to the airport right after service. They had taken up an offering in a laundry basket, just like this. And I asked the deacon, tell me about the laundry basket. I didn't know maybe that's some special meaning, and it was. He said, well, one Sunday... Bishop Winley said that God told him that he needed to give everything in his pocket, all the money in his pocket he needed to give. And, uh, and then he said, God told him to tell you 
to give everything in your pocket? And he says, they did. And the only thing we could find to carry the money out of that church that day was a laundry basket. And he said, we don't know on any given Sunday when God's going to do that again. And so we just keep using the laundry basket. <laughs> and uh, I have never forgotten that. And uh, we want to give you the opportunity to give tonight, to be a part of that. Julie, I think you have a, a gift that just came in. So come up and, and tell us about that gift. I do. We're going to get it kick-started tonight. Amen? I was approached yesterday by a dear, dear friend, and this friend wanted to remain anonymous, so we will keep them anonymous. But um, he was with another one of their dear, dear... I can't say his or her, so I'm trying to be careful. One of their dear, dear friends yesterday, or Thursday, I believe, and they were sitting at a dinner table just like we are tonight, and he said... I'm going to ask you to match these funds. I, I, I want you to do a matching fund. And so uh, friend one, friend A, showed a check of $1,000 to friend B. And friend B says, well, I got one better than that. You're going to match my check, and I'm going to up at $1,000. So within about five minutes' time, they had raised $4,000 for Southwestern Christian University. $4,000. And so our challenge tonight is to do some matching funds, I believe. There's also a $100 check in here, so there's your $4,100 off of your $4,000 that you invested, right? So just keep that in mind that matching funds, we can do a lot tonight Amen. with that. Amen. Amen. That's the way it works. If somebody wants to stand up and, and challenge uh, uh, someone else to give $2 million, uh, we'll, we'll take it. We'll just, we'll just start and wrap up this capital campaign tonight. We won't, we won't have to print any brochures or do anything like that. We'll just do it tonight. But uh, we want to give you the opportunity to give this evening. There's several ways. There's some envelopes on your table. Don't want to take a lot of time. I know you're tired and, and you've got a big day, many of you, tomorrow. There's envelopes on your table. Be sure and put your name and address and those type of things. We, we have a hard time uh, always keeping good addresses and emails and all. So do that. That's one way of giving tonight. There's also one of these on each table. And there's a, a, a scan. Uh, what's it? QR code. QR code on there. I hate going into restaurants where they make me use that. But anyway... It's there. It'll take you straight to a page to give. You can go to the website right now, uh, swcu.edu, and I think the first thing that comes up is the opportunity to give. We're making it as easy tonight for you to give as we know how. Envelopes on the table. We like cash. We take cash. We, uh, you have the QR code. You have the ability to give online. You also have the ability here in this room over against this wall, a couple of representation uh, from the business office, they have credit card machines if you want to give by credit card tonight. But this is the time, this is the opportunity for you to give and give to Southwestern Christian University as part, and this will be really kind of the, the seed gift into the campaign, into the capital campaign. So take a moment and go ahead and get those checkbooks out and uh, to, to, to quote uh, a dear friend of a lot of us, Joaquin Garrison, Joaquin used to say we're going to take up a Presbyterian offering. That means reach over and take the billfold or checkbook out of the person's next to your pocket and write the largest check you've ever written. And so tonight you get that opportunity to, to give to Southwestern. And so go ahead and do that now. And uh, if you want to bring them up and throw them in the basket here, we'll, we'll do that. Or just leave them on the table and we'll collect before they throw away the dishes and, and plates and all of that. So take a moment and go ahead and do that. We appreciate you. The mug on the table are yours. Take those mugs, coffee mugs, 75th anniversary. Let me, uh, let me have one of those mugs there. Yeah, 75th anniversary. It's a big coffee mug. It's not those little tiny ones. This is a great big mug. And so... 
six mugs, okay? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, or we'll sell you those mugs, either one. So, now this reminds me, I think I told the story maybe last year. Anybody remember R.W. Schambach? R.W. Schambach and his crusades used to stand at the front and hold his buckets. And uh, you, can, you can go around and pick it up. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you do that. But he would stand at the front and make everyone in his crusade march by. He said, if you don't have anything to put in it, just come touch the bucket so that God can maybe in the future give you something to give. But so we're, we look at that offering plate. It's not, it's not one of those little old tiny plates or bags. That's a, that's a laundry basket. And, uh, but thank you so much for your giving. Thank you so very much. If one voice wants to come back and prepare to uh, close out in, in a song, uh, Dr. Beecham, the presiding bishop of the International Pentecostal Honest Church, thank you for being here, Bishop. And uh, he's going to come after this song and dismiss us, maybe say a few words, greet the people. Thank you for being here, our presiding bishop of our denomination. We love our denomination. We are part of the denomination. If that's ever been questioned, don't question it anymore. We are International Pentecostal Holiness Church, and we don't apologize for that. But thank you for your giving tonight. If you, if you, uh, the chairman is walking around. If you have a gift, raise your hand, and he'll make sure if he doesn't, find him afterwards and, and uh, uh, put your gift in that, in that basket. So God bless you. Thank you so much for being here this weekend. It's been an honor to have you on campus. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in the spring for sure when we uh, have our gala at that time. So God bless you. Thank you. One voice, go ahead and take us out. If you would like to stand and worship with us one last time tonight.
praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Ms. Davis, thank you and the women of the Pentecost Holiness Church for supporting this institution. And I think everybody in here knows this is good soil. This is good soil. And may the seed that's being planted, not just financially, but the seed that we see up here, the young men who will inherit, young men and women who will inherit century 21 for the kingdom of God. May they bear much fruit that will remain for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. We give you thanks, O Lord, that 75 years ago you moved upon the hearts of men and women to do something very special here in Oklahoma, to do something that would bring glory to your name to do something that would extend from generation to generation. And Lord, if it by your sovereign grace will extend until you return, a place, a place where young men and women can come year after year and find hope and deliverance in Jesus Christ, that they can come to this place and get the kind of quality education they are getting. They can be prepared to serve this world the, to the ends of this earth serving people loving people loving you O oh Lord Father we thank you for President Murray for the faculty and the administration we thank you for these students and we thank you for the alumni and the friends that have gathered here tonight and now Lord pour out your blessings upon this school Bring a great move of your spirit that will multiply your kingdom out of this soil, this good soil. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a good rest of the weekend.